What's going on guys, Chuck here, and today I wanted to change things up a little bit and talk a little bit about 3D. Um, as I've stated before, and you may or may not know, um, I actually am one of the few people, <laughs> probably on the left, that still owns a 3D television. Um, now again, you know, my history with that is I didn't seek out to get a 3D television uh, just at the time, and this goes back... It's been quite quite a few years actually, and I think about because I think Chris at the time was probably three, maybe four, and he's you know twelve now. When I got this TV, um, and like I said, I was just looking to buy a new TV, and this happened to get it was affordable, and it just happened to be 3D, and I'm like, this is when 3D was still popular, obviously. Uh, and I thought, what the heck, I'll get it. I don't worry about it, you know. I I wasn't a big fan of the, the 3D resurgence of theaters, mostly because I'm not a fan of post-converted 3D films. You know, I always enjoy film that's shot in native 3D, actually shot in 3D, made for 3D. I can appreciate it more than a movie that's just made flat. We're going to convert it to 3D just because we can sell more tickets that way. <clears throat> now, there are some excep exceptions to that rule. Um, this is not the look. Because to me, a lot of time the, the post-converted 3D does not look as good as shot in native 3D. But again, you know, and I think also now here we are, you know, ten years or whatever down the line, and all this now, the, the technology has gotten better, so the post converter 3D is coming along. But um, so with that, I was able having that TV, it gave me an opportunity to check out the um, what was at the time, you know, the the Blu-ray 3Ds that came out at the time, uh, which was like very popular. Almost every major film coming out was getting a, a Blu-ray 3D release. You know, all the Marvel movies and any, any kind of action, big summer, you know, tentpole movie was getting a uh, Blu-ray 3D. Some, you know, some discs were even getting a uh, Blu-ray 3D, Blu-ray DVD combo. <laughs> um, and so I got to check some of these out. And, you know, I it was nice because there are a lot of films that I wanted to see in 3D, but I was never, I could never really get into the, the red, you know, and uh, blue glasses. I think it's a horrible way to watch 3D. <laughs> it was one way to look at a comp book in 3D, but watching movie, it is not uh, a good way, you know, the the color images, it's not, it's it's headache inducing. And it's just, you, it really takes away the color from the films, you can't really see it. Uh, with Blu-ray 3D, it was a different process, much like the word theory, you had the, um, the polar, um, Polarized glasses as opposed to the anaglyph. Um, and of course, the blue ray 3D send the signal to these particular glasses uh, that would match up, and you'd be able to see the film in 3D without the color change. Now, it would, you know, because, you know, the glasses you wear, you know, naturally uh, kind of like sunglasses in a way. So it dims the picture a little bit. But overall, you're still seeing the picture normally as opposed to, again, with the red and blue and changing up. And I got to see a lot of these blue ray things. It, 3Ds on the TV was really cool. Um, so I picked up a lot of this and I've watched them over time. Now, fast forward to within this a few months ago of me buying, you know, a projector, getting a, uh, projection screen, uh, that has changed even more so because the, you know, I have a 4k projector, which ha is 3d capable because that was on one thing where he says, I still do. Like getting the 3D Blu-rays, there's still a few out there, not many. Um, but of course, you know, I know the 3D TV won't, it's not going to last. I'm surprised it's lasting as long as it has. It's still got a bulb and everything. I had to replace, I've had to replace it for a couple years. Um, but you know, I was like, okay, well, this TV goes out. How am I going to have these Blu-ray discs? I'm not going to be able to watch. So I was one, I'm glad I got this projector that allowed me to still watch uh, 3D. And honestly, it's really open up the 3D even more so than the uh, 3D TV. And I think it's possibly because of the screen. You're looking at a bigger screen. I suppose the, and the, my TV was 73 inch. The project screen is 120. So you're looking at, you know, obviously the bigger space, you know, the 3D image is much more uh, um, in your face, if you will, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And so... I'm really looking, or excited to go back and maybe revisit uh, some of these uh, Blu-ray 3Ds 
with reaction screen. And I thought, you know, what the heck, and maybe I'd share that, you know, go through these movies I have in 3D and, and share them with you as I go. Um, first of all, let me show you what I'm working with here. Here is a little smudge on them, but here is you know, your basic, my basic 3D glasses. Now, uh, I have like almost 20 pairs of these, probably actually probably about 15 or 16 pairs. Why so many pairs, you should ask? Well, initially, when I first got the TV, I had two, and they weren't these, they were different kind of uh, um, glasses, actually. And actually, I'll show this to you real quick. Okay, so here was the first set of 3D glasses I bought, and they were true depth 3D, but and here they are. You know, these are these are big, big and bulky. You can see that they're really nice, though. I mean, they work wonderfully, and you see, here's a little sensor that reads. When the, the TV comes on or the projection, whatever, it's the 3D image jumps back here, it flex, it kind of turns on the uh, glasses, if you will. Um, here's a little power switch up here. And these are, are all USB chargeable. That's what's nice about them. And you just plug it in right in here. Plug them in a USB, charge them. Uh, these are nice, but they, to me, they're a little bulky and... For a person who already wears glasses, these are difficult. These are very difficult to keep on because, you know, they're just too, they just, you know, I mean, I look doofy anyways, but <laughs> they're very hard to look at. Now, when I bought these newer ones, you see they don't have the big arms. And these are also true depth, I believe. Now, these are evolved three dimensions, this particular set. I've got a couple different uh, sets, honestly, because I bought a lot of them. But these will actually go over, and they sit right on top of They actually they fit great, and they're more comfortable. They're not as bulky. And what I like about this is a little switch up top. If you push it, it kind of it changes the how you look at the three D. Because sometimes there's like a different uh, way that's projected that you, have, you can set up. Um, but sometimes you look at it, and it's kind of an off. You flick the put the, the push little button. It'll adjust it, and you're like, okay, now everything's smoother. It looks better the way you intend it, which is nice. And again, these are uh, USB chargeable also. Uh, the charge, you know, lasts for hours, um, so they're really nice. And I, I just love them. And, of course, they come in these nice little cloth bags so you can keep them protected. And usually cloth bags will include a, USB, a little USB charger. And if I have one in here, I'm hoping I do. Yes. Also a little cloth to wipe the lenses, um, keep them safe. Now, again, why do I have so many? A couple years back, I hosted a 3D movie night. And at the time, I only had like four or five glasses, probably like four, three glasses, four glasses. So I wanted to invite more people over, so I had to get more glasses. And I could buy them in bulk on Amazon. They're not really that expensive. Um, I can't remember who that price is. They... they fluctuate and of course by now they're probably even cheaper like i said you can buy these things in bulk um any 3d glasses you can buy in bulk even and especially anaglyph anaglyph which is their the paper red and blue glasses you can buy those in bulk for very very cheap if that's the way you want to go but that's not going to get you very very far <laughs> so these like i said I, I really enjoy these love their very nice. They're, they're comfortable. Um, they're, they charge easily. They're you, all you have to do is you know, put them on. It'll read a signal and click on right away. It's it's perfect. It, 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 everything looks great through them. So that being said, I figured I'd share with you the first movie. Three so movie go through. Well, actually, if you go way back, me and my son Chris, we did discuss uh, watching Ghost of the Abyss in 3D, uh, probably about two years ago, or a year, year or two ago. Uh, we watched that in 3 now. We'll definitely need to rewatch that, but maybe we'll get back, we'll do, redo that one again later. But on this video, I'm going to talk about the very first um, big studio 3D film. One, one is considered by many to be probably one of the greatest 3D films ever made. And that is House of Wax 
from 1953 starring the one and only Vincent Price. Um, now, I got a hold of this by chance. That wasn't what I went looking for. Uh, I picked this up at my local drive-in, the Skyline Drive-In. Um, this was during, uh, I want to say, it was either in the Super Monster Movie Fest weekend or it was their uh, Drive-In Massacre weekend. One of those two. But with both weekends, you know, it's uh, two weekends camping. They have host a bunch of different horror films. Uh, but they have a lot of vendors. And someone was just selling random Blu-rays. Um, and I just happened to see this. And I forget what the price was they were selling it for, but it was under 10 bucks, I believe. Like, maybe 8 uh, And I saw it. It was... Because I've always heard of this, how, this movie, how good it was. And I saw this, and I saw that it was Blu-ray, you know, 3D. I snagged it up right away. And I just got to watch it uh, here, yeah, like a couple days ago. And let me tell you, this was fantastic. <laughs> that's all. I mean, that's all. This movie, the movie itself is great, but the 3D was amazing. Um, and this, for all people, because 3D gets a bad rap, um, and, and maybe some reasons, rightfully so, uh, because most people's perception of 3D is just stuff that's jumping out at you. That's that's 3D. That's all it's a gimmick, and they're not wrong. And most of that is probably because of the 80s. You know, the, a lot of the films in the 80s, the, there were the, the second or uh, surge, well, the second or third surge, whatever it was, of 3D film. That's basically the gimmick then was, let's just throw it at the screen, make you jump, that's it. You know, and then you, uh, there's a, a couple of, there's like coming at you, uh, was a big one. I mean, the, the name's right there, coming at you. It's telling you right now what we're doing, coming at you. Um, which is a Western, so that's a bad name for this movie. <laughs> it's just describing the three. You know, think about the movie. But you had the, in the eighties. You had the three big three movie or you know, part three movies as Friday Thirteenth Part Three, Amityville Three D, and you know uh, Jaws Three D, and those movies you know they're hit and miss in quality. Um, my first flavor of those is Friday Thirteenth Part Three. Uh, other three Jaws Three D is probably the weakest for reasons besides the three D. But that's what they're giving was just throwing the stuff at in the camera. Nothing else. You don't want to get anything else. So most people will get the idea that's all 3D is. This will tell you absolutely different. Uh, this movie is... First of all, let me back up. <laughs> if you don't know the House of, Wa House of Wax, basically the uh, Vincent Price, um, get his name here, plays uh, Henry Gerard, Gerard, who was a... A wax sculptor, he you know owns a, a wax museum, and his investment partner is wanting him to, you know, is not happy. He wants to make more money. You know, basically he's they he's trying to destroy the place to get the insurance money, and you know Vincent Price's character is trying to stop him. There's a big fire, and then you know Vincent Price is you know thought to be dead, but you know he he's back. He's trying to you know he starts up another wax museum. And I don't really want to say too much without giving it away. <laughs> but let's just leave it at that. Um, and that's the crappy synopsis. But again, it's hard to say too much without giving too much away. I really, if you've never seen this movie, I really want you to see this movie. Um, and if you can see it in 3D, by God, see it in 3D. Because it will blow your mind. Um, and see it in good 3D. If you, you, know, if you can see it in, in the uh, Blu-ray 3D, please do. Um, the 3D is so perfect. Best way I can describe it. It does it does such an excellent job of giving you a sense of depth. Um, there are not a lot of, there are very few, you know, jump out of the screen at you. This is all about the, the setup, the depth. You know, you're looking at... Man, I really wish I could describe this better. Um, but you really feel the space in between things. I mean, it really shows up on a screen. And it's it's just... Sh the shots are fantastic. You really feel, you know, like you're there. And it's just so many great moments. It really uh, um, amplifies some of the tension in some of these scenes. 
when you, you know, some, especially with the wax figures, because the wax figures look amazing to begin with. In 3D, they look even creepier because it's like they're just right there in front of you. And, you know, you see, you know, a person walking through the museum and you, the, 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 the wax uh, displays are like, you know, here, they're, that, they're back here. They're all over. They just, they're, they're just oh God, I mean, I, I, I can't describe it well enough. I really wish I could, but again, the sense of depth is just fantastic. And you've, you know, the only gimmick, if you will, is after the intermission, which blew my mind, by the way, this film has an intermission. <laughs> and I think because initially it was done that way, because the process they used was 3D, where old film projectors, you know, they could, they would switch over reels as the films were going, so it would play continuously. But because of how this had to be synced up with the two different eyes, they had to kind of stop and set the reels up and sync them together so they had to have that intermission put in. Um, but after that, you have uh, Vincent Price characters opening up his new wax museum. You know, he's got a basically a, a carnival barker out there, you know, hyping everybody to come in. And he's got this the old paddle ball. And he's hyping everybody up and he's just doing his tricks with the paddle ball and this is where the 3D comes in because he's like bouncing it right at you and doing all these cool tricks. And it looks great. It does. But that's the scene where you're like, okay, obviously we're, you know, and he's like talking directly to the audience too. So it's like, is it really, first of, all, first of all, I thought it was actually part of the intermission gag, not really part of the movie, but apparently it's part of the movie. But, you know, he's doing the whole thing with the ping pong ball and it's jumping at it. And that's the, 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 probably the one only time where it's, they're doing an obvious gimmick if you will the 3d but most time it's all about the sense of depth uh the the, the space in, in in the scenes uh the wax museums set is just you know the set up perfectly uh and it just again it's a, it's a movie that needs just needs to be seen in 3d and i can see why people say you know this it's really put uh, you know it was the first major studio film this is uh was it warner brothers I believe it was. Yes, Warner Brothers. They released this. Uh, so it was, again, the big first studio 3D film, and it, it was a hit, and it just it looks great. It's like, And it helps that the movie's very good in itself. When we went out in 3D, the movie's enjoyable. It's a, a quick watch. Even with intermission, it's a quick watch, because intermission is only like... It's like intermission, 10 minutes, and it really comes back on, so it's not really even a full intermission. It's just put it in the film. Mm, excuse me. But it's a quick watch, it's a fun watch, and it really has some good suspense. Um, and, you know, Vincent Price is, Vincent Price, he's amazing. And I guess this was like his first real starring role. He'd been a lot of, and it kind of like transition for him. He'd been a lot of character actors, a lot of stuff on stage, and this was kind of like his first, um, was, kind of like the transition from this movie, is kind of when, after that is when he went to being into the more of the horror films that he would kind of be known for in the later end of his career. Um, so this is a very important film for the history of Vincent Price and the history of 3D and just, you know, film in general. It's a very important film, I guess. Um, and also you get a very young Charles Bronson as a mute, you know, uh, henchman thug, <laughs> if you will, which I didn't even realize is Charles Bronson until I, I was watching the behind the scenes or the documentary on, I mentioned Charles Bronson, like, Charles Bronson, I didn't like Charles Bronson. Probably because he was so young, had a crew cut, didn't have a mustache, I didn't even recognize him. Um, but I, I really wish there's more I could say to really get across how good this is. Um, especially considering the director of this film, um, I was get his name here, uh, Andre, de, Andre de Toth, only had one eye. He was a director with one eye who filmed a 3D movie. Think about that. He has no depth perception, but he managed to put together a fantastic 3D film. That is amazing. Uh, again, it's it has to be seen to, believe, to be believed how amazing the 3D in this is, how immersive um, it is, and it's not... Grown inducing, it's not, oh my god, throwing stuff at the screen, except for that one little bit um, it, where it's obvious. But again, everything just feels natural. It's, uh, I don't have the technical expertise to discuss 
you know, whatever, you know, about 3D. I can tell you, it looks fantastic. <laughs> um, so instead of rambling on and on again about this, I'll just tell you that if you have a 3D Blu-ray player or any way of capable of seeing Blu-ray 3D, you owe it to yourself to check out House of Wax in 3D. It you will not be disappointed, I promise you. Any thoughts you may have had, if you want people to think that 3D is just a gimmick and you know, and, and some maybe it is, but it's just a come at you, nothing at then you need to see this because this will prove you different. And you know, and for those of you who can talk about Avatar, forget Avatar. <laughs> this is a way better 3D to me than Avatar. I don't care what you say. In my Jada, because I hate Avatar, probably, but we won't get into that. <laughs> this is 3D at its best. Uh, used wonderfully, um, not not used as a gimmick, but used as a tool. That's the best way to describe how the 3D is in this film. It's not being used as, hey, here's a gimmick to get people in here. I mean, I'm sure maybe that might be what it was intended for, but the director used it as an as an artistic tool to really show off his vision, and he does a phenomenal job with it. He uses the 3D to his full ability, not just for the come at you gimmicks. And, you know, again, you've got Vincent Price. What more could you ask? So definitely, if you can get a hold of this and see it in, in, in 3D, do so. And as a bonus, this actually also includes uh, Mystery of the Wax Museum from 1933, which House of Wax is actually a remake of that film. So a nice little uh, bonus film. Now, that, the quality of that film out here is not great because I think it's a two-strip Technicolor film. I mean, it's, it is what it is. For 1933, but it's cool to have this on here as a reference point because that that is a film that this movie is more or less a remake of. Um, but yeah, if you enjoy 3D, if you've never seen this, um, if you don't enjoy 3D, you know, and if you're willing to give it a shot, definitely check this one out. Uh, it comes highly recommended. I again, I am still blown away by how good this looks. Now. Everything from here on out I watch in 3D is going to have a heart, a very high bar to top with House of Wax. Um, I'm definitely going to have to... I've got quite a few. Now, the movies I'm thinking about, I'm really... are the ones that I have that, again, were shot for 3D. I'm gonna, I don't think I'll concentrate too much on a lot of the you know, modern post-conversion 3D films because that's not how they were intended. Um, with a few exceptions, something like maybe a Piranha 3D, which is fantastic for all the wrong reasons <laughs> um or uh, my bloody valentine 3d um but you know hopefully i can go through here and check out some of these and i do have a lot of classics some 80s ones um even you know i still have a couple of uh, uh old black and white from 51 so i like to check out someone for the first time in the 3d so i'm looking forward to that so hopefully it's something i can do occasionally come on here and just give you my thoughts on how good the 3d is on the blu-ray um even the movie, if you you know, if I've never seen it or whatever the case may be, mostly for the you know, just to see, hey, I'm watching a 3D movie, let's check it out. So that is it for now. I know it's kind of went on and on. A whole lot of nothing being said. But you know, this is making this up as I go like usual. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this, click thumbs up, uh, share, subscribe, leave me a comment below. Uh, let me know your thoughts on 3D. Um, uh, are you one of the few people that had a 3D television? Um, or are you watching uh, 3D in some other, you know, fashion? I, I know that, obviously, you can get 3D projectors. Uh, I think some of the PlayStation uh, virtual headsets, where you can get you know, uh, 3D in those. I'm not sure how those work, honestly. Um, you know, what are some of your favorite 3D movies? Do you have any you know, memories of good 3D in a theater? Uh, I have a few. Um Actually, like one really, <laughs> which I've I've kind of mentioned before, and I'm sure if if I can keep doing this, I'll mention it again somewhere down the line. Uh, but that is it for now. So until next time, this is Chuck, and I will see you on the other side.